Hello everyone, it's Miss Ines speaking, and today we'll talk about London, then and now. How has London changed in the last 500 years? About 500 years ago, the King Henry Tudor VI ruled England, and the population of London was 50 to 100,000 people. At the beginning of the 1500s, around half of all London properties were religious properties, such as churches. But this all changed with Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. London was rising in popularity as a commercial and trading centre for Europe. This was also the time of Shakespeare, when drama and theatre in London were growing. 400 years ago, the 1600s. At that time, during Stuart London, the population has risen to 200,000 citizens. In the 1600s, London was very crowded. Even London Bridge, the only crossing over the River Thames, had many buildings on it. Most buildings were made from wood. Covent Garden and the West End were growing and the Bank of England opened in 1694. The 1600s saw 30,000 Londoners die from the Great Plague and many more suffer in the Great Fire of London of 1666, although it did end the Great Plague. 300 years ago, the 1700s. At that time, in Georgian London, the population was from 550,000 people to 600,000 people. George III acquired Buckingham Palace, then known as a Buckingham House, for his wife in 1761. 1750 so the second crossing over the River Thames with the opening of Westminster Bridge. After the Great Fire of London, there were a lot of new buildings constructed, this time from brick or stone. How about your city? What materials do people use to build their houses? London grew rapidly as the centre of the British Empire. Coffee houses were popular meeting places. The printing press gave rise to the might of Fleet Street for news and the high crime led to the creation of the first police, the Bow Street Runners. 200 years ago, the 1800s. During the Victorian London, population was reaching one million citizens. In this century, we see the arrival of Trafalgar Square, Big Ben, the House of Parliament, the Royal Albert Hall, the Victoria and Albert Museum, and Tower Bridge. During that time, there was a lot of rapid growth and London was become a global capital for trade, politics and finance. The Metropolitan Police was established. In 1863, the London Underground was opened and the overground railways caused London to spread to the suburbs. There was still a lot of poor people, which was reflected in novels such as Oliver Twist, written by Charles Dickens. 100 years ago, the 1900s. During Windsor, London, population had reached 6.5 million citizens. During the Blitz alone, there were over 30,000 tons of bombs dropped on London, killing over 40,000 people. Overshadowed in the first half of the century by the First and Second World Wars, including the Blitz in 1914-1941, when a lot of London was destroyed, 
especially in the Docklands area. London was nicknamed the smoke because of all of the pollution caused by coal fires and the great smoke of 1952 which killed 4,000 people. The second half of the 1900s saw more positive events with the 1948 Summer Olympics and a focus for a swinging 60s. The M25 was also completed in 1986. Modern times, 2000s onwards. It means the time from the year 2000 up to this moment. The population of modern London is about 7 million and it's keep rising with each year. The new millennium saw new iconic buildings including the Millennium Dome, the Kirking and the London Eye. London hosted the 2012 Olympics. And now it's time for your homework. I would like you to answer the question below in your worksheets or in your notebooks. What do you think the London of the 2100s will look like and why? Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and you've learned a lot about London. I hope to see you soon at school. Bye-bye!